Greetings, this is Pillar Nexus the Ancient Gladiator with more Pillar Loves Tabletop Games, 2nd Edition. Uh, we are continuing to add new games and expand the tier list. Today, I bring you Splendor, a nice little game of gathering gems and using them to purchase development cards. So... At the setup of the game, depending on how many players there are, there are two players. We'll only use four of each color of gem. And there will be three nobles. I have the promo nobles, the first set of promo nobles. So, need some offbeat ones. If there are three players, there will be five of each color of gem and four nobles. And at four players, Use all the gems and have five nobles. The remaining cards will be unaffected. So the first player will get the first player token if you have the Cities of Splendor expansion. Uh, the youngest is the youngest player will be the first one. So on your turn, you have the following actions. Um, take three gems that are completely different. Take two gems of the same kind, as long as there's at least four of them. Um, reserve a development card. You can reserve up to three. You can take one that's out here, or blind from the top of the deck. Which then gets you... Uh, no figure notes today. It gets you a gold piece, which can be used as any color. And then that'll replace that. Or if you have enough to purchase the card, a card that is out here, or one that you've reserved, uh, you return the, the gems and gold to the bank. And it's now in front of you. You are limited to having, at most, 10 uh, between the gems and the gold pieces. If you would have more than that, then you have to um, reduce your collection to 10. Yeah, it's at the end of your turn. So, um, when you have these cards out, um, they provide a number of effects. First is your discount. The gem shown is a discount towards future purchases. So, let's say I have this card. Um, I wanted to get this one. I only need two blue. Um, secondly, there are points values. So this is worth two points. To end the game, you need to have 15 or more. Um, the player who, has, who sets off the end of the game uh, triggers the end game. And then every player who has not taken their turn this round will take their turn, um, and then the round is over. So it's entirely possible to be the last player in the uh, the round order and end the game right then and there. Um, another thing you can get are nobles. So you see the uh, numbers on the left here with the corresponding cards. You need to have that many cards of those types of gems. So three of the diamonds, three of the sapphires, three of the jet, I think. And then there's rubies and emeralds. But once you qualify for at least one noble, you take in the noble and add it to your collection. And that counts as points towards the end of the game. It is a fairly simple, fairly quick game. On its own, you might play it a bit, but I think one of the good things they, they did for the game to make it even more uh, replayable is the Cities of Splendor expansions, which I will go over here momentarily. So the Cities of Splendor expansion is split into four modules. The first is Cities. 
Um, instead of having nobles, you'll have cities which are double-sided. So you've got one, the other. Uh, there are seven of them. And at the start of the game, uh, you'll shuffle them and pick uh, three. And that pretty much sets up the victory condition for the game. What you're trying to accomplish is having this many points between your cards and at least this many uh, uh, those colors for your developments. It makes the game a little more interesting because instead of having to go for uh, just 15 points in general and being able to rely on nobles, uh, you kind of you have to think. It kind of takes a balanced approach of getting, you know, a bit of the cheaper cards along with the you know more of the expensive cards as well. And then, and then there's this one that's just straight up points. 17 prestige points and you win. <laughs> I like that it's that in, uh, it's playable with any number of players. Um, it doesn't change, you know. You could have two, three, or four and it's still three cities. Um, it, it names the cities on here as well. So the Bridges, Bridges, Lyon, Lisbon, Seville, Venice, Florence, and Pisa. I'm gonna have to look at these, uh, look up those cities and see which one is which for for uh, each of these pictures. The next module is trading posts. So the way this one works is each player will be given a set of uh, shields, their coat of arms. And then over the, the course of the game, there'll, there will be an opportunity to claim these uh, assorted powers. So after you check to see if you qualify for a noble, uh, you check to see if you qualify for uh, power. Um, for this one, if you have the, these one, uh, three of the red and one white, then whenever you purchase a development card, you take a gem. It lets you recover quick. Um, if you have two uh, white, then whenever you take two gems of the same color, you get to take a third gem and be different. So it lets you keep up the pace a little bit better. Uh, three blue and one black. Um, each of your gold tokens now counts as two gems of the same color. It still counts as one token against one of ten. And you do not get change, I believe. Uh, okay. Um, if you have five green and a noble, then you just get straight five prestige points, which might even win you the game right there, depending on how, how far along you are. And this one, three black, one prestige point for each, each of your fields on the board. So you can get all the bonuses. There's like 10 right there, 13. Um, so, so yeah, if you have them all, that's five. If you have this one, then an automatic, you know, there's another five right there, so it's 10. Nobles are always worth three, so there's, you know, at least 13. You're probably winning the game if you have all of them, but good luck getting all of them. But yeah, it's, it adds these crazy powers that twist the game, and that's that's kind of a kind of a cool thing. It's definitely one I'd play, uh, you know, a little more often with uh, some of the more competitive uh, gamers I've got with my group. And then we have the Orient, which adds uh, three new decks for each of the three levels. Um, whenever a card's taken from its given pile, um, a new card will come up from the deck until it's emptied, of course. Um, and these ones provide some uh, bonuses that are unique. 
It seems like nobles are the big thing for, for this one. So, this card, when you acquire it, it's worth two gold tokens and can be spent during a single purchase. Each token can replace uh, any color. Um, if you only use one of the seconds wasted. Uh, once spent, the card is discarded. It's out of the game. Um, this one, uh, pair it with the card that you already have. So if you don't have any cards, you can't really make use of it. And it has to not already be paired up with something. So let's say I had this card. I've acquired this card on a previous turn, and then I build up and acquire this card. I pair it up, and now it's worth two blue. It doubles that bonus. Um, for level two stuff, this one works the same as this one, but it also lets you take a level one card from uh, either side, a base game or in. Uh, this one lets you reserve a noble. Um, you do not gain a gold token for reserving the noble. But you are now the only person who can... Uh, who can have them visit you. So it gives you an in-game goal to focus on. Um, this one is a straight up two. Uh, two bonuses and then this one is take a level two uh, face up card this one instead of having gems you have to give up cards and as a priority you have to give up ones that you've paired up with the bags so I could discard that to to get that. I probably wouldn't want to do it if I was reserving the snowball though because that's that just set me back. <laughs> but it, hey it's three points at the cost of well, two, two cards that weren't worth anything. Yeah it's um, it's got some interesting powers to play with. It's one that uh, mess with is you know, just about as much as the, the trade routes, trade routes, but you know, these, just, these, these decks run out fast. Then again, they are harder to pull off, um, especially the higher levels, but it's, it's, it's another thing to, to mess with. And finally, what I think is one of the tougher, uh, modules is strongholds each player will have three strongholds in their color so every time a player purchases a card it is before replacing the purchase card the stronghold is placed so i purchased a green card i probably want to reserve something that's going to have a green bonus to make the most of it. So we're going to reserve that one. Um, alternatively, instead of placing one, you can move one that you already have out there. Or you can, um, let's say, let's say we're still going here. Um, let's say I purchased one. I want to kick this guy out. There we go. You remove one before the cards are placed. Um, after uh, after you've done your action, uh, you can if you've got your three strongholds together on one card and you have the resources to pay for it. You can remove all three, pay for the card, and add it. That is your one way you can uh, get two cards on one turn. But then before replacing the card, you get to place your stronghold again. You know. I'm not sure what to make of this one. I actually, I've tried out the other three with people, 
Uh, this is the one I have not. I might bring it with me to the game store uh, next week and say, hey, we need to play this module because I really need to see how this runs. But that's, that's the Cities of Splendor expansion, and that's pretty much it for Splendor. Why, I, why, why do I love this game? The basic game is simple. It's fast. Um, it's there's no crazy difficult super math to, to worry about. There's no dice rolling and hoping for certain numbers. And it's possible to learn the decks and all that. But it's it's just a nice game, you know. There, there really needs to be some more nice games out there. You know, this is kind of a battlefield of sorts. Um, you know, trying to guess, trying to figure out who's going to try to beat you to what card first, and maybe you might have to reserve it. Um, or which gems are going to be more in demand. I mean, you can kind of see the what the demand is gonna be by looking at by paying attention to the cards. You see a lot of you know early on. You know, there's a lot of cards that need white or green. Uh, a little bit that needs red. These ones are gonna need you know quite a bit of black, especially this one. Blue's not in too much demand. You know, you pay attention to that stuff. And you plan accordingly. You also don't don't forget about the nobles. Those those help. But yeah, there's for a fairly simple game. There's a lot to think about, but at the same time, it's it's not complicated to think about. You know, I, I don't know a better word for it, but it's it's definitely my kind of game. You know, I I totally support it. And I hope more, you know, lots of people play it. It's, um, it's got a digital adaptation as well, but the, you can't really beat the experience of, you know, playing with someone face to face. Things are opening up again too. So, you know, get it, get a copy of Splendor and come down to the game store and play a game. Uh, there's, I'm sure you'll find people who would love to play. So, this has been Pillar Nexus. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.